me about this sort of innate intelligence that we have about what we seek. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I, I couldn't agree more with AJ's description of the wise adaptation. And, and I think the, the phrase that we often use at camp is looking, looking at the beautiful intelligence of everything that's arising. And I really do mean everything. And I know there's always like the but, but, but it's, it's not that that impulse is what needs to be enacted. But when we look at, so for example, say my husband's working a ton, which he has been, uh, and resentment arises, I can say, oh, what's the beautiful intelligence? The beautiful intelligence, oh, I want his attention. I want, I want to feel connected with him. I want to feel important in our relationship. And then from when I see that intelligence, I'm like, oh, well, what can I do about that? And then the world of possibility opens up for me in, in connecting with him. You know, similarly with all the young people, there's so many impulses that come up for them that they were shamed for or said were not okay. And so those were said, you know, no, you cannot have an anger outburst. No, you, and so they learn that that's, that impulse is wrong or bad. And then they miss the intelligence in it. Because, for example, with anger, because it's such a great example, anger is just a signal that some boundary has been crossed. Wow, that's really good to know, you know? Ah, okay. All right. All right. So let, let me make sure we're. We're behind you. We're way behind you on this path. But so uh, what I'm what I'm thinking you said is, how did you just say that? You said. Well, let me give you an example. So at sleep awake camp, one of the things that we do is we offer people a chance to begin releasing some of the stored anger because, as we know, anything that we don't process gets stored in our bodies. Our bodies remember, and. So the first thing is just to know that it's safe and have a safe environment to begin expressing and then know that you're loved like while while you're expressing and and a lot of people when they go through this for the first time they are so lit up you know even just 5 minutes in all of a sudden there's just all this energy in their bodies and they're just like I mean sometimes they look like superheroes you know, because all of a sudden it's like all this power is coming into their body and you see them standing up. And, you know, I run a women's group here in, in Oregon as well. And I've done some anger release work with them. And it's amazing. These things that people have held and the anger that they've held. And when you hear it, it's always so reasonable you know like an anger towards all the like mothers and grandmothers who told them that their bodies needed to be a certain way or them and you know like weighed themselves every day and she's like that's what i grew up with and she was angry mm -hmm. you know and then all the other women in the room can listen and say like yeah yeah me too or like you yes you know and and so i it's a real like demonstration of how somebody moving the anger that's stored in their own bodies actually is in service of all the people around them too. You know, if it's done in a, in a safe way, not turned toward other people, but really used as this is a signal for me. Uh -huh. Anger arising is a signal for me that there's a boundary that's been crossed. Something's not okay with me. Okay, so when we're trying to apply this to our own uh, insights in our lives, um, since we don't get to go to the, the, the teenage camp, <laughs> I, I'm thinking, you know, you gave a great example of that kind of anger building up over a situation. Now, even the way you worded it, yeah. after you really thought your way through why you were angry, pointed to solutions. To me, the way you right? You said, I'm angry that I'm not getting his attention. I'm angry that da da da. And so uh, to me, all the three responses that you rattled off just like that, I, I went, oh, that's a, there's a solution there. Oh, there's a solution yes. there. Right? Is, is that kind of what you're offering us? Like once you exactly. feel what you so, feel, then you've got places to go with it, right? Absolutely. And, and the beautiful thing is each of these energies that sometimes we may avoid when it's fully felt, has a gift, right? So anger fully felt 
gives you clarity and determination, right? Because it is the fuel to, you know, to know what you want and to the energy to go after it. And it's so beautiful and essential. Give me another example so people can use this in their own lives. Give me another example that's that seems common. You know, maybe, can you think of something like dissatisfaction? You know, how, you know how once you get dissatisfied with someone or something like your job or a coworker or whatever, your mind starts going on this search for evidence that you're right? Yes. Right. Okay, let me just feel into that for a moment. So first of all, there would be an awareness you know, with camp or with, with some of these skills, okay, I am projecting, I notice that I'm projecting a world where my boss doesn't appreciate me, is asking too much of me, is sending me texts when I don't want, you know, like, it, it's just not cool. And I'm, I'm pissed off and they're not respecting me and they're not respecting that I have a life, right? Like, and you can see how that energy could start built, like, sorry, um, you know, it, it builds, right? And so then, okay, you can pause and say, what, what's not okay with me? I'm angry for a reason. There's an intelligence to my anger. What boundaries been crossed? Oh, and then you're like, oh, I want, I want to feel like my boss is listening to what's important to me. What's important to me is that I have a clear delineation between work and I'm only, and these are the hours I'm willing to work, and this is when I'm not willing to work, and that it feels like an invasion to me when I get requests that come after 5.30 p.m. And, you know, and then you know, it may unravel even more, like maybe there were boundaries with parents that you didn't feel respected. And, you know, we get into this whole other piece, but as soon as you get to that level of detail about preferences, then you can go to a boss and say, hey, I notice I've been feeling frustrated recently. I don't know what's possible to change, but I notice, especially when I get messages after 5.30, that I feel upset and, and I don't know quite what to do. And I wonder if there's something else that we could work out. And that kind of languaging comes from an understanding of, okay, I got some data some information about my anger and about my preferences and needs, but it doesn't say I know what's true about this other person. And it doesn't say I know exactly the one solution, right? Because when we come together with another person with our needs and wants and boundaries, there's a world of possibility. And if I get stuck in a binary way, way of thinking, then all of a sudden the solution space is narrow and not nearly as beautiful and wide. Uh, because if I come to my boss from this place of what I need, not assuming and really open, you know, then there's also a space for even more connection with my boss too. And that's probably something that was also missing. 